Welcome to our exploration of Hades, Lord of the Underworld. We'll uncover the mysteries of the Greek afterlife, its ruler, and how this unseen realm shaped ancient beliefs about life and death. Our journey begins with an introduction to Hades himself, both as a deity and as the realm he governs. Hades, Lord of the Underworld, reigns over a realm hidden from mortal eyes, shaping Greek understanding of life and death. As both deity and domain, Hades embodies the duality of existence, overseeing the transition from life to death. The underworld mirrors yet contrasts the world above, reflecting Greek views on mortality and cosmic balance. This invisible realm underpins the complex relationship between the living and the dead in Greek mythology, serving as a cornerstone for their beliefs about the afterlife. To understand Hades' role in the Greek pantheon, we must first look at his origins and how he came to rule the underworld. Hades' ascension to power followed the great war known as the Titanomachy. Victorious against the Titans alongside his brothers, Zeus and Poseidon, the cosmos was divided among them. Zeus claimed the sky, Poseidon the sea, and Hades the underworld. Far from being a punishment, this assignment was a crucial role in maintaining cosmic balance. As ruler of the dead, Hades ensured the cycle of life and death continued uninterrupted. His domain, though somber, was essential to Greek cosmology, reflecting the inevitable transition all mortals must face. With Hades established as the ruler of the underworld, let's explore the geography of his domain and how it reflects Greek beliefs about death and justice. The underworld's landscape is a complex tapestry of rivers, realms, and barriers, each with profound symbolic significance. Five rivers shape the realm. Styx, the main boundary, is crossed by Charon's ferry, Acheron, the river of sorrow, Cocytus, the river of lamentation, Phlegethon, the river of fire, and Lethe, the river of forgetfulness. Souls face judgment before three impartial judges determining their eternal fate, Tartarus for punishment, Elysium for paradise, or the Asphodel Meadows for those who led unremarkable lives. Cerberus, the three-headed dog, guards the entrance, while the gates of horn and ivory connect the living and dead through dreams. This intricate structure embodies Greek views on morality, justice, and the afterlife. Understanding the geography of the underworld helps us comprehend the Greek concept of death and the soul's journey after life. In Greek belief, death is not merely an end but a transition. At life's conclusion, the soul separates from the body, beginning its journey to the underworld. Proper burial rites are crucial, ensuring a peaceful passage. Hermes, the divine psychopomp or soul guide, leads the departed to their final destination. The afterlife reflects mortal deeds. Heroes find paradise in Elysium, the wicked face punishment in Tartarus, and the majority reside in the neutral Asphodel Meadows. This system of divine justice echoes the Greeks' belief in cosmic order and personal accountability, emphasizing the importance of living a virtuous life. To maintain this cosmic balance, Hades employed various guardians and judges, each with a specific role in the underworld's operations. Cerberus, Charon, and the judges of the dead were essential in maintaining order in Hades' realm. Cerberus, the vigilant three-headed dog, ensured no living soul entered the underworld uninvited. Charon, the ferryman, transported souls across the river Styx, a journey that required payment, a custom reflected in Greek burial practices of placing coins on the deceased's eyes. The triumvirate of judges, Minos, Radamanthus, and Aeacus, evaluated each soul's mortal deeds, determining their eternal fate. These figures embodied the Greek concept of divine justice and the inescapable nature of death reinforcing the belief that one's actions in life had lasting consequences. While Hades ruled his realm with unwavering authority, his personal life was not without drama, as exemplified by the tale of Persephone's abduction. The abduction of Persephone by Hades is a pivotal myth that epitomizes Greek mythological themes and the concept of cosmic balance. Hades, smitten by Zeus's daughter Persephone, abducted her to the underworld. Demeter, her mother and goddess of harvest, plunged the world into winter in her grief. Zeus intervened, decreeing that Persephone would spend part of the year in the underworld and part on Earth. This compromise not only explains the origin of seasons, but also embodies the Greek acceptance of life's dichotomies. 
Persephone's dual role as Queen of the Underworld and Harbinger of Spring reflects the eternal dance of life and death, growth and decay, illustrating how Greeks viewed these opposing forces as integral parts of existence. Hades's character is further revealed through his iconography and divine attributes, which symbolize his power over both death and wealth. Hades' iconography provides insight into his divine nature and the Greeks' perception of death and the afterlife. The Helm of Darkness, gifted by the Cyclopes, granted him invisibility, symbolizing his unseen influence over mortal fates. His two-pronged bident represented his authority over the dead and the Earth's riches. As Pluton, meaning the rich one, Hades governed abundance, linking him to precious metals and gems found beneath the Earth. This dual role as ruler of death and wealth reflected Greek beliefs in the underworld's power over both mortality and prosperity, emphasizing the interconnectedness of life's various aspects. While Hades was generally unyielding in his rule, there were rare instances where he showed leniency, as in the famous tale of Orpheus and Eurydice. Orpheus's journey to rescue his beloved Eurydice offers a glimpse into Hades's complex character. Moved by Orpheus's exceptional music and profound love, Hades momentarily set aside his unyielding nature, allowing Eurydice a chance to return to the world of the living. However, his condition, that Orpheus not look back until they reached the surface, proved too challenging. When Orpheus faltered, turning to ensure Eurydice followed, she was forever lost to the underworld. This myth reveals Hades' capacity for empathy while reinforcing the inviolable boundary between life and death, exemplifying the uncompromising reality of mortality in Greek mythology. Hades' interactions with mortals were rare but significant, often highlighting the consequences of attempting to cheat death. The tale of Sisyphus cheating death twice illustrates the folly of mortal defiance against cosmic order. This cunning king first chained Thanatos, death personified, temporarily halting deaths on Earth. Later, before his own death, Sisyphus instructed his wife not to perform proper burial rites, using this as an excuse to return to the world of the living. Hades, recognizing the deception, swiftly restored balance in both instances. As punishment for his hubris, Sisyphus was condemned to eternally roll a boulder up a hill in Tartarus, only to watch it roll back down each time he neared the top. Such myths reinforce the interconnectedness of life, death, and fate in the Greek worldview, emphasizing the futility of resisting one's destined end. The concept of fate was intricately woven into Greek beliefs about life and death, with Hades playing a crucial role in its enforcement. In Greek mythology, fate is an immutable force governed by the Moirai, or fates, three goddesses who weave the threads of mortal lives determining predetermined lifespans, Clotho spins the thread of life, Lachesis measures its length, and Atropos cuts it at the appointed time. Hades, as ruler of the underworld, enforces these unalterable decrees, ensuring that souls arrive in his realm when their time has come. His impartial custody of souls and the final judgments align with fate's dictates. This intersection of fate and the underworld underscores the Greek belief in cosmic balance, where death's inevitability and divine justice are inextricably linked shaping their understanding of life's purpose and the importance of living virtuously. Hades's influence extended far beyond the confines of his subterranean realm, shaping Greek attitudes towards mortality and existence. Unlike the worship of other Olympian gods, reverence for Hades was subdued and private, reflecting Greek unease with death's mysteries. Artistic portrayals in ancient mosaics and pottery depicted him regally, often with symbols like crowns, Cerberus, or his biddent, conveying both fear and respect. Hades profoundly shaped Greek attitudes towards mortality, influencing philosophical concepts of existence and the importance of virtuous living. The belief that one's deeds determined their eternal fate in the underworld encouraged ethical behavior and contemplation of life's meaning. This impact on Greek thought extended to literature, art, and even early Christian concepts of the afterlife demonstrating the enduring legacy of Hades and the underworld in Western culture. As we conclude our exploration, let's reflect on the profound impact Hades and his realm have had on Greek mythology and philosophy. 
Hades' realm unveils the depth and complexity of Greek mythology, serving as a mirror to life's spectrum and balancing visible and unseen aspects of existence. Far from being merely a place of despair, the underworld embodies concepts of justice beyond life, reflecting mortal deeds and divine order. Understanding this complex realm is crucial for grasping Greek concepts of fate, cosmic equilibrium, and the human experience. Hades and his domain are integral to comprehending the intricate tapestry of Greek cosmology and worldview, offering insights into how ancient Greeks reconciled the mysteries of life, death, and the afterlife. Their beliefs about the underworld continue to influence our cultural narratives and philosophical discussions about mortality and the nature of existence.